Hey everyone, welcome to the Roto Grinders Morning Grind Podcast. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. It's Wednesday, it's April 10th, it is 2024. We have a 10 game MLB main slate to talk about here on today's podcast. We got some day baseball as well. FanDuel really kind of spread out the slates and nothing really useful over there. DK actually has a really good morning slate, and um, I'm sure that they'll be talking about that tomorrow on the morning show on grinders live why can't i think of the name roto grinders today or something um yeah so I, blunders there you go. Ro- roto grinders today yep so there you go um blender and will will probably break down the early slate for baseball and uh, i don't know if there's an early crunch time or not i i know that i'm on early crunch time on thursday so uh what's up tim how is it going my friend tasteful tides joining me today and um yeah man enjoying a lot of baseball on tuesday night and kind of just man bad slate for me i'll just i'm just gonna lay it out there i was very high on the yankees and rangers and they've just disappointed big time here today yeah, my um, my SB twos uh, really let me down. Uh, uh, Savali and uh, Sandoval uh, are getting uh, both lit up currently. So, uh, complete bust slate for me. Um, I really like this slate too. Um, I thought I don't know. I thought I was going to do better, but there was no no winning for me. Yeah, um, it's gonna. I think it's gonna end up being. Pretty bad slate for me. I have a couple decent teams going on FanDuel, and I had a really good, like, um, I have a really good hedge stack on FanDuel if um, if Sandoval pitches really bad. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that kind of shapes up. But I don't want that team to do good. <laughs> but you gotta You got to love those hedge stacks every once in a while. But, yeah. Hope everyone's having a good night. What's up, YouTube chat? We got Yeezy, Todd, Richie. Greetings from Dallas. Um, yeah, welcome, everyone. Let's jump in and uh, talk some baseball. Hey, when you have a bad slate, you're just ready to get back at it. That's the best thing about DFS baseball. There's 200 slates throughout the year, and you're going to have bad slates. I mean, you could have the worst pitcher in baseball against the best team in baseball and they don't score any runs. And then you just move on to the next day and you have a short memory. So um, I'm in that short memory phase today and ready to break down this slate. Milwaukee at Cincinnati, nine total in this game. The Reds, a 136 favorite. Wade Miley against Hunter Green in this one. We start with Miley he threw a rehab start in triple A with Nashville through 55 pitches in that one. So I really don't expect him to come out and throw a lot of pitches in this game. And I don't know if I necessarily want to play him against the Reds anyway. He is a very, very, very easy cross off. Um, Too many other pitchers. No chance I'm paying 7,200 for him in any slate, no matter how many lineups I make. Uh, Easy, easy uh, X button. Um, I don't think he's going to be fully stretched out. Um, So it's, it's easy, easy cross off. Yeah, um, no chance of playing Wade Miley today. I will say pitching on the slate's kind of rough, um, but no chance I'm playing Wade Miley. Hunter Green on the other side of the ball here. Any interest in Green in this one? Yeah, I mean, I think I do, just because his strikeout upside is so high. He's a. I really like playing Hunter Green in tournaments because he has such a wide range of outcomes, massive ceiling, um, small floor also, uh, but huge huge K ceiling as long as he can keep his control um in check um i think that he's a fine uh perfectly fine uh gpp play yeah and richie in chat says any weather concerns to this game i i don't ever talk about weather on the the podcast except for like ridley wrigley wind because <clears throat> first of all i'm not kevin roth and he doesn't have a night before post and second of all i just kind of wait and see what roth has to say weather the night before anyway is going to be really tough to kind of figure out. So I don't ever mess around with weather. We just give our thoughts on the games and we'll see, but yeah, there's some potential in like Cincinnati, Boston, Atlanta, potentially. Um, So we'll see. We'll see what Roth has to say, but I like the fact that Hunter Green's just pitching deep. Like they're letting him throw a lot of pitches. So on a slate like this, 
I'm a little interested in playing him. I will say, like, Christian Yelich might actually be healthy. Um, he's off to a really strong start. I think he has four home runs already. So that's kind of scary. And Milwaukee's not a bad offense. They're okay. So I think this is a great tournament option. And that's kind of what I would stick him to is, is just tournaments here. Um, let's go to the bats. Any interest here in the Milwaukee bats? Yeah, I mean, I guess there's got to have some if you're making, you know, I'd say like, you know, five or so or more teams. Um, Yelich, like you mentioned, um, I think it's uh, Oliver Dunn is a value option for sure at 3,400. Um, even some of these righties, like Green has shown a little bit of a reverse splits tendency. So like any of these power bats, Adamas, Hoskins, Contreras, I think they're fine for one-offs. I'm I'm not gonna look to stack Milwaukee, but you know, hunting for home runs against Green, I think, is a uh, is a fine tournament strategy. Yeah, I think searching for home runs or like that three man of like Yelich, Adamus, Bowers, like right in the heart of the order. Those guys, all three of those guys have power. Uh, like you mentioned, Oliver Dunn. If you need some val value on this slate. Um, did they price him up at all? I haven't looked at pricing at all. Who? Done. He's 34. Yeah, I mean, still super cheap, especially if he bats lead off. And we, I yeah. mean, we, we we almost have to mention Bryce Terang. It, like he hits towards the bottom of the order, but like, he's stealing bases. He's getting on base. Um, he had a home run the other night. Like, we don't expect that to happen every night, but um, I, I think that at least mention in Terang is I mean kind of have to the dude's hitting 380 to start the season uh let's go reds bats love the reds today this is a fantastic spot um spencer steer is one of my favorite hitters on this entire slate he is just a guy that i love against left-handed pitching and he's a guy that like was super hot in the spring and just hasn't slowed down whatsoever so like steer a lot and i mean i'm definitely going to get plenty of exposure here uh, against wayne miley making his first start of the season yeah, Spencer Steer, like uh, last season and this season, uh, uh, 185, uh, excuse me, against lefties. I was looking at right at righties. Uh, yeah, so a 234 ISO against lefties. Uh, so definitely a huge power bat against left-handed bats. So I love the Steer call. Um, I don't mind guys like Incarcion Strand, um, uh, Hamir Con Condelario, I think they're fine plays. Also, I agree with you. I'm pretty high on the Reds myself. But yeah, Steer is like one of the top bats on the slate, uh, I, I think. All right, moving on. We got the Cubbies and the Padres. Eight total in this game. San Diego, 138 favorite. Kyle Hendricks, Dylan sees facing off against each other here. Any interest in Kyle Hendricks? Um, not really. Not particularly. Um, I think he's, I don't know. He just, does, I don't think he has much of upside, even though he's dirt, dirt cheap. So I think he's a pass. Like I know the Padres, they're not super, like they don't have a ton of power, but they have a pretty strong lineup top to bottom. So Babbitt's really going to have to go in his favor. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to hunt, hunt for that. Yeah, not not really interested in Hendricks. He's not a strikeout guy. This is a very low strikeout team just in general. So um, I'm going to pass on Kyle Hendricks. Dylan sees on the other side here. Cubbies have been you know somewhat strong to to start the season. They have a lot of upside in this lineup. Dylan sees a good major league pitcher, definitely above average stuff coming over to San Diego from Chicago. Um, what are your thoughts here on sees? I don't mind him. I mean, he certainly was a capable pitcher. He had a 31 and a 31.7% uh, strikeout rate against righties last year. Um, there's definitely quite a few righties in this Cubs lineup. Um, overall, I thought his control was pretty good also. So, you know, the pitching is pretty bad on the slate. So I think you have to have some interest. The Cubs are a better team than they were last year, though. So I don't know. It's kind of a... You could definitely pl play both sides of this game, um, but I would definitely lean on Cease. Um, how would you rate Cease versus Hunter Green? I don't love the price tag 
on Cease, I I think we're going to talk about two other guys in this 9K range that I like more than Cease today. I like Stroman more, and I like Bradford more. Um, so I don't know. Like Hunter Green and Cease are kind of the same play for me. Like if anything, I'm maybe playing like one out of three. I don't get um, a lot of exposure to playing him. I mean, that's just kind of where I'm at with him. But yeah, I mean, I think Cease is okay. I just wish he was a little bit cheaper. 10-2 really yeah. hasn't shown dominant stuff, and I mean depending on the lineup they can get three to five lefties in this lineup if they really wanted to so if they go six righties i'm much more interested in in playing C's right. than i exactly than, like yeah just kind of a lineup thing for me on c's but hate the 10-2 price tag we have we still have bats to play right like there's still like bats to get overall today so i mean i still want to prioritize pitching but i don't know if i get to seize a ton today um bats here and th- okay just because i don't necessarily love c's today doesn't mean that i like the cubs a lot like i think bellinger one-offs is fine like when c struggles it's typically like left-handed power did did he really hit a third home run what is happening i'm like captain cheap catcher and i hate playing chalk catchers that are cheap and langoliers was cheap against like one of the top pitchers on the slate and was chalky today and i faded him i think i have a little bit of him on like some sim labs teams that i built because he was popping was in sims. he was popping in sims hard earlier <laughs> do you know who else yeah. was popping in sims out of nowhere cj abrams my best team right now is a sim uh, labs yeah. team it, yeah. it has glass now langoliers and it has a washington stack um so mm-hmm. that yep. fully <laughs> it has young and abrams on it who got two stolen bases and a home run um so uh, whatever uh, <laughs> um anyway what are your thoughts here on the cubbies bets um i mean certainly you could certainly take one offs but i'm not looking to attack cease even if i'm not going to pitch him so uh definitely bellinger's fine at 5k um maybe uh ian Happ, but Really, I'm not really that interested in bats for Chicago. Uh, going to the Padres here, any interest in them? I think I have to have some just because Hendricks is so bad at striking people out. So I know he's not the, like, like the worst pitcher, but like Jake Cronenworth at 3,600, I think is very, very viable. Uh, Eddie Rosario, 3,000. 3, um, excuse me, uh, not uh, UG Rosario, if he, if he gets the start. Um, I think he's interesting. Profar, 31. Like some of these cheaper guys, I think are uh, very, very viable in this spot. And then you, you could always play Tatis, I think is a little bit too expensive. But, um, you know, as part of a stack, absolutely. Yeah, hated seeing that they sent Pauly down because he was cheap. Um, Jackson Merrill still cheap at 2,900. Kyle Hendrick doesn't really overpower anybody. So looking for some cheap players here. Cronenworth, like just getting some cheap bats from San Diego um, is how I would approach them. And I don't know if I, I don't, I wouldn't full stack them in this spot, but I definitely don't mind picking on Kyle Hendricks. Like this is a guy, like I said, he's not really going to go out and, overpower anybody in this game i mean he had a 16 percent k rate last year <laughs> all right miami at new york gosh i hate the yankees eight and a half total in this game yankees a 205 favorite ryan weathers against marcus stroman here we go again um any interest in ryan weathers N- no no yeah, me either but I'm gonna play the yankees again this is where you gotta have a short memory um uh, but not playing <laughs> not playing um weathers in this one going to the other side i think stroman is a safer option today i I don't think there's a safe option in baseball ever but 101 and 98 pitches in his first two starts this season is fantastic to see from stroman gets a fantastic matchups for strikeouts and just not a lot of power i think stroman goes out and throws a really solid game here I do agree with you that this is probably the quote unquote safest spot on the board. I just, it's weird to see Stroman at 9,600, in my opinion. So I used to see him at like 75 or 8K. So it feels like we're overpaying, but we're, we're really not. So 
Um, I think Strowman's a strong, strong play. I do think guys like Green have higher ceilings, though. That's my only argument. Yeah, I see. I I agree and I disagree. The the disagree part is Strowman can throw seven or eight innings with seven or eight strikeouts against the Marlins because of the strikeouts in this lineup. They don't walk a lot. They sh- they swing a lot. They strike out a lot. So. I just think overall, looking at like Stroman's numbers here, like low walk rate team, high strikeout rate team, not a ton of power in this lineup. Like it could be yep. a really, really strong deep into the game type outing for Stroman where he's the highest scoring pitcher on the slate. So, um, you know, like Hunter Green's never going to be 9,300, you know, and we'll, we're about, to, we're, we'll talk about Cody Bradford, but like he's not a 9K pitcher. They just, they priced up pitchers that are decent on the slate because there's not a ton of decent pitchers on the slate. So I kind of just have to overlook pricing because all the decent pitchers are priced up. So um, that's my thoughts on Stroman. I like him a lot. And um, I, as far as Miami goes, a one-off of like Jazz is always in play just because of how good he is. And I just don't even know if I necessarily want to do that today because Stroman is just – a really good ground ball guy um, throws a lot of strikes and doesn't give up a lot of barrels. So probably off the Marlins today. Yeah. In, in one to three lineups, like I play, I'm not rostering any, anyone from Miami. Uh, the Yankees, gosh, man, again, love the Yankees again today. They, they were one of my highest zone stacks on Tuesday. They absolutely crapped the bed, throwing that out the window and going right back to the well here, even though, um, I hate the Yankees. You see my hat. Um, I, I just gotta, you gotta overlook what happened against puck and say it's Ryan Weathers, man. We, we gotta go back to the Yankees here. Is Anthony Rizzo going to be Uber chalk at 3,900? Eh, maybe, maybe, maybe not against the lefty, but still that seems super cheap for him. But yeah, so like Stanton at 47 Torres, 46, they're very, very, very affordable. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously an amazing spot. We should be attacking weathers, um, definitely with these righties Rizzo's too cheap, even left lefty lefty. Um, so yeah, I, I love the Yankees. <laughs> I hate him, but I'm going to play him moving on. Yeah. We got, we're Baltimore. playing them. We're playing them. <laughs> we're playing them. Baltimore at Boston. I'm from Maine, yeah. Stevie. I hate the Yankees. I uh, know. Baltimore at Boston nine total in this game. Pick them game. Cole Irvin, Cutter Crawford facing off in this one. Uh, Cole Irvin, one start this season, kind of struggled in that Kansas City start. Got hit pretty hard. Um, any interest in him here against the Red Sox? Uh, I think I think you could. Um, sixty eight hundred. I mean. Boston's not as good as they once were. I know Irvin's pretty bad, but I think I, I'd rather play Irvin than Hendricks. I'd rather play Irvin than Weathers, you know? So, like, you have to find some cheap SB2. Um, I think that uh, I think you could potentially play him, but certainly not somebody that I'm going to play in a one to three, but possibly if I was playing like 20 max. See, I think I, I'm considering playing him on one of my three teams today. And the really? reason is like, okay. Lefties against the Red Sox are going to be a thing. They have a 29.7% strikeout rate against left-handed pitching this season. They yep. just really struggled with lefties and like one of their best right-handed hitters. I, I mean, fractured his shoulder, um, you know, Trevor yep. story out for the season. So, I mean, I, I don't think Kurt Cole Irvin is necessarily good. But I think he's good enough to beat the Red Sox right now. Um, Kind of the theory about like Anderson and Sandoval, right? Like just good enough to beat the offense that you're facing. Um, So I think at 6,800, when we're looking at the slate going, all right, we don't have a ton of options. You know, I don't want to play Jose Quintana against Atlanta in this price range. So, you know, in that like thought process, I just feel like I think. Cole Irvin is playable um, today. Cutter Crawford on the other side of this game, you know, really good outing against Seattle, kind of struggle with command against the Angels his next time out. This is a tough spot, tough, tough spot against Baltimore here. 
this is a really tough spot and uh you know it's obviously in fenway too which hurts the cause also um i don't think i'd cross him out in like a 20 max um because i think he does have decent stuff and he can get you like 16 to 20 points which on the slate is really good but uh I don't know. No, nobody I'm really looking to like roster heavily. Um, Baltimore bats. What do we think? Um, Jackson holidays ownership is going to be today at minimum salary. Is he, is he the men? I hadn't looked at his price yet. Okay. Minimum salary. Oh. Number one prospect of all in all of baseball. Um, highly touted prospect for sure. 2k shortstop 2k. Um, I mean, I I would assume that he draws a really decent lineup spot. I would assume he hits like in the five hole here. Like, I wouldn't even be shocked if they they hit him second and move Rutschman down. But I mean, Rutschman's kind of been raking in that two hole. So, I mean, maybe Santander down and they put Jackson in the um, three hole, but. I mean, he is, he's like one of those guys where if he draws the start in this spot, he's a fade at your own risk, um, ownership wise, because he's going to be massive chalk. Would you say over under 50%? I think it'll be under 50%, so, depending on your contest, right? Like if you're playing, right. It, I'm talking okay. about like the fifth, like, like the $15, 150 max, like I 30, think, 30, 30%. I would say like 40. Like if you're playing single entry stuff, I think he pushes like sixty to seventy percent today because they priced yeah. up, they priced up the pitchers right, and like a, a guy like Jackson Holiday is going to open up getting that pitcher and still getting the stacks you want, and he's shortstop right. Like he, obviously Corey Seager is on the slate and his teammate, I mean Gunnar Henderson on this same team, like. Both of those guys are like elite shortstop plays. And, you know, we talked about the Yankees with Volpe. So maybe it's under under that. But I think still like knowing the prospect. No, everyone knows. Like if you talk, if you listen or watch baseball at all, you you know who this guy is. You know who right. Jackson Holiday is. Yeah, I don't I don't know a ton about prospects, but I, I do know who he is yeah. because everybody does, you know, like so. Yeah, elite skills um, and like speed too. Like he has the upside as well. So, uh, did you did you give me your thoughts on the Baltimore Bats overall? I don't, I don't, apps, I don't love them. I think there's better stacks, um, but the stacks going to be cheaper now, right? So, um, that's a really interesting take too about uh, Gunnar Henderson uh, because Holiday is going to be so cheap. Uh, so Henderson's going to be super, super low owned. Um, so he makes a really strong uh, tournament pivot. Yeah, I'm interested to see what they do. I assume Jackson Holiday is going to play second base. Um, I assume that's what's going to happen. And like Westberg's going to kind of be the odd man out. Um, so we'll see. But would love to get second base eligibility on him ASAP because, um, I mean, playing. Gunnar Henderson and um, Jackson and Stacks is going to be nice. I'm just quickly pulling up um, FanDuel to see if they have him in the player pool. Mm. And the answer to that question is... I don't see him. So I was like, on FanDuel you could play both of them, but you know he's not in the player pool on FanDuel, so you don't have to worry about it. Right. So there you go. Uh, Boston Bats, any interest here in the Red Sox? They are just not suited for this matchup. So, um, not not really. Uh, Tyler O'Neill, I guess, would be a good one-off at 4,800. Um, I think Devers is always good if he's going to be low-owned. But that's really that's really it for me. May maybe, maybe some Bobby Dahlbach. But um, that's it. This team is really pretty depleted. It's pretty sad. You got to remember, like, um, Ref Snyder is another guy that they platoon. He, he's hurt. Um, right. Story's out. They're waiting on Grisham to get healthy. They're missing a lot of their right-handed bats. So, like, maybe 
maybe at one point in the season, like we're not talking as much about like facing them with like lefties. Um, but I, I feel like really the only guy that I would play here is O'Neill. Yeah. And like you said, Devers is always in play. Like he's just elite. All right. Mets and Braves, no total in this game. So it's expected here that Allen Winnens is going to start for Atlanta, the books and some of the other, like they just don't have an Atlanta starter yet. Um, so, but it's expected that Allen Winnens is going to start for Atlanta. And we know that Jose Quintana is starting here for the Mets, but no total in this one. Any interest here in Jose Quintana? No, absolutely not. <laughs> not against the Braves. Uh, one of the best teams in baseball, as far as left-handed pitching is concerned. Um, Alan Winnens on the other side of this game. We saw him a little bit last season. He, he had like six starts and I mean, had really decent stuff. 24% Ks, um, 10 0.8% swinging strikes has shown great stuff in the minors. And I think it was only a matter of time before he got called up here um, with as bad as the Braves pitching has been. He's kind of on the fence for me. Like I, I, I do talk about all the time, how I like the Mets when they're outside of City field. And I think they have a really solid lineup, but right. he's, he's cheap enough where I'm definitely interested in seeing what the type of ownership and stuff is. He does struggle with home runs. And like, I don't know if you want to necessarily struggle with home runs against the Mets when you're pitching at, you know, truest instead of city field. Yeah. I'm really not that convinced that I would want to roster him. Um, I know 7700 is not a horrible price, and I know pitching's really thin. I can just see this game being kind of tough on, tough on him. So, uh, no, I'm not I'm not going to play him. Uh, Mets, Bats, any interest here in the Mets? I think I got to have a little bit in, like, Nimmo. Um, Alvarez, I think, is, is still, still too cheap. Uh, Polar Bear at 51. I don't know about Lindor at 5K. That might seem a little bit too expensive, but in, in your stacks, that's fine. Um, but like Alvarez, Alonzo, Nimmo, a three man like that. Yeah, I mean, I young pitcher that has struggled with home runs. Um, I'm in on you know taking some bats against him. He has fly ball tendencies, and like I said, he struggled with home runs. Even in the sample size that we saw him last year. He struggled with home runs. So the fact that he's already shown that he's going to potentially struggle with home runs, and it was a lot of lefties. Like, lefties beat him up. He was terrible in this ballpark, too. So, yeah, I mean, really small sample size, but a 1.84 whip, 4.55 X FIP against lefties, 1.89 home run per nine. So, uh, and, like, playing Pete Alonzo with any of these lefties and making a three- or four-man stack, I think, is fine. You're going to get... Some value with like DJ Stewart, Beatty is 3,100, McNeil is 3,200. So a lot of value with, you know, potentially playing Alonzo and Lindor. So I I think I'm back on the, the Mets train here today as well. What are your thoughts on Lindor? I mean, he is really struggling. Like, it's amazing how bad he's been. Yeah, I watched, I mean, I watched a lot of the game. Um, it was one of the games I was watching before we got started, but... Uh, so on on DK, it's like it's you gotta like really think about it whether or not you want to play him or not. But on FanDuel, like he's still so cheap that like you're just playing him. Like you're just gonna keep you're gonna keep playing him. Um what is the on over there? Like 31. He was like 31 or something. Um I assume okay. it's gonna be close to that. So uh, I yeah, I mean the price makes him super intriguing on FanDuel. On DK, I mean it was nice to see him get going a little bit in the Cincinnati, the last game of that. But, I mean, he had another rough night at the plate against Renardo Lopez. So, maybe they give him a day off um, and you don't have to worry about it. But, yeah, I mean, I like the Mets. I like the Braves, too. Like, I, I like Atlanta. Uh, again, we have a lot of hitting on this slate just in general. Um, so, you're not going to struggle finding any bats that you like today. Correct. I'm guessing you like Atlanta, too? Yeah. I mean, I... I it's like, how do you not want to attack uh, Quintana? So, 
I mean, it's like R- Riley, Acuna, Albies, Az- Azuna, Duval. That all of them are fir- firmly in play on this slate. Oh, I just now saw that Cal Quantrill had six strikeouts. Um, what did he really? <laughs> it's six strikeouts. Um, I wonder what his prop was. Two and a half. It was three and a half. Three and a half. Oh, yeah, three I mean, and a half. Okay. All I'm right. gonna keep that, betting the under on three and a half every time. I yeah. I would have bet I would have bet the under. I'm glad I missed that. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't. Um, lot lot of uh, rough night for betting. I need Conforto and the Giants. Um, to make my nice cl- my night close to break even. Basketball basketball betting has actually held me up tonight over anything. So, all right, Houston at Kansas City nine total in this game. Houston a 120 favorite. Hunter Brown, Seth Lugo facing off against each other here. Um, I did read a report that like Hunter Brown might not start in this game, but mm-hmm. as of right now, um, that's who we kind of have. But we'll see. Um, if it is Hunter Brown, he pitched five days ago. It would. It, I mean, it'd be in line for him to pitch in this game. Um, but. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, any interest in Hunter Brown if it is Hunter Brown? If it is Hunter Brown, he's my favorite pitcher under 8K. Definitely. Um, so, I mean, I do I do have interest in him. Uh, just because, you know, he's cheap. It's KC. Um, I think he's he struggled his last two starts, but he'll turn it around. You know, KC's a pretty, pretty uh, weak lineup, so... I have no issue getting to River Brown at all. So, um, who else would it be? Would they go? I think it's going to be Brown or a call up. Um, it makes the most sense for it to be Hunter Brown. I wonder if but, they, I wonder if he's hurt. Um, not from what I've heard. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there isn't, like, any reports that it wouldn't be him. It's just weird that, like, the books don't really have a a pitcher on some of them. And, like, even DraftKings doesn't have, like, a pitcher listed for here. But, like, if you look if you look on, like, MLB and everything, it, it all – everything says Hunter Brown. So, I'm just assuming that it's Hunter Brown. But I'm with you. Yeah, I have interest got... in him. Yeah. Like, he's a guy that has strikeout upside. I know he's, like, struggled with the command a little bit to start the season. But he is a guy – that has like strikeout stuff. He had a 26% K rate um, last year over a large sample size. So a lot of strikeouts in this lineup. Yeah. I mean, if it is Hunter Brown, I have interest. Um, again, I don't necessarily know who else it'd be. Um, France just pitched. Blanco just pitched. Um, I did see a report that they called up Argetti. Oh, and some yeah, easy just said it could be him as well. So maybe it's Argetti here. Ooh. <laughs> Tim's like, who'd that be? Um, Spencer, right. Ar- Ar- <laughs> I got you. Um, Spencer Argetti, like he is young and really, I mean, this is a guy that we really thought we'd see next year or towards the end of ne- or this year. Um, minor league stuff, really. Christian Javier pitched today, Mark. Um, so, but yeah, if it is Spencer Argetti, I would have interest in him, but I don't think he's on. I don't think they have him on the player pool. Um, he's, so, not the, he's not in the player pool. They could add him conceivably, but yeah. he's not in there now. <laughs> the odds of them adding him probably very unlikely. Yes. Um, yes. True. But yeah, I mean, very, very talented pitcher. Um, again, like this is a guy that I really thought we'd see towards the end of this year or next year, but big, big time stuff. Um, big curveball, big fastball has a really good above average slider. Big time strikeouts in Triple A last season. Um, shot up the ranks really fast in Double A. Two Triple A last year. So yeah, I mean, big swinging strike rates. We'll see if it is him, and they did add him. I would definitely play him in this spot. Yeah, make him make him like sixty five hundred. He'd be amazing value, six K something like that. If he was anything under eight K, I think I'd play him. Like he he has yeah. really good stuff. Um, I will say though, like he struggles with walks, which is always concerning. But I mean, the Royals aren't a patient team that walk a lot. So this matchup is a great matchup for him. Maybe they're going to give Hunter Brown an extra day because of Valdez getting hurt. Um, so I could see that potentially being a thing. But yeah. 
Um, Lugo. Hey, Seth Lugo on the other side of this game. Kind of a guy that we've talked about at the start of the season. He's had two fantastic matchups, Minnesota and Chicago. Now he gets Houston. Sorry, Seth Lugo. It was a fun ride, but I'm out. Yeah, I'm def- I'm definitely out. Uh, I would definitely stack Houston. They'll be somewhat low owned, I think, too, because we have the Yankees and we have um, who else was it? Atlanta. We have a Cincinnati game. Uh, so I think Houston will be fairly low owned against Lugo. Not not like super low owned, but not the highest owned stack on, on the board. I think they're going to be the second, potentially the first or second highest owned stack in the slate. Um, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, the reason reason I say that is Lugo, <laughs> he's been good this season, but it's been matchup based. But if you look at like past history for him, like he's hittable and gives up a ton of hard contact. This lineup is just really good, and it kind of it fits in with like Jackson, who we were talking about, minimum salary at shortstop. Like you could play him, um, and just not play Pena. So like the the stack works with the cheap like punt value play too. Um, where like on the Yankees, you're like, oh man, do I want to play Volpe? Um, it and Jackson works with the Braves too. So again, Jackson's going to be massive chalk today. But uh, I think the I think Houston's going to get some ownership today and i think rightfully so that they should get some ownership today i think this is a fantastic spot to attack houston oh yeah it definitely is uh as far as kansas city not ton of interest in kansas city like obviously we'll have to see who's pitching but like if it's brown i mean brown brown and spencer um Argetti, like they both struggle with command from time to time. So you could potentially play like a little mini stack here and hope that you're on the right side of like walks and a home run. But it's just not a team that I think I'm going to get to a lot today. Yeah. I mean, as much as I love Bobby Wood, I'm not paying 6,300 for him on this slate. It, it would just ba- basically be uh, Vinny P or South Perez for me or Melendez, who I think is still uh, too cheap. It's got water all over me. Um, gotta love that when that happens. But I will Wit will be less than five percent owned on a seven game slate. So I mean he has that going for him because of his yep. price and you know, Jackson and all those other guys that we talked about shortstop. So all right, we finish out the slate with the most disappointing team on Tuesday slate, in my opinion, the Rangers and Oakland. Uh we got Stripling and Bradford. Any interest here in Ross Stripling? Uh, no, I do not have any at all. Yeah. Um, right back to the Rangers again. We'll talk about it. Um, but <laughs> Cody Bradford but might be my favorite pitcher on the slate today. Um, I've been super impressed by his start to the season, and I think Oakland stinks. So I Cody Bradford might be like my guy today. Um, I'm going to dig a little bit more into it in the morning, but from what I've seen so far, even last year, he has really decent swinging strike stuff. So I think Bradford's going to be my guy today against Oakland. Yeah, I think that's a really good call. I think he's going to be very, very popular, but that's fine. I think he's like in that same kind of like Stroman kind of like quote unquote safe category, you know, and, and he's cheaper. So I think like, you know, Bradford, and Strowman are going to be your uh, like optimal pairing, like in cash games. What is this Jacob Young guy? Like he just stole his third base of the game. Um, and I, of course I he did. Yeah. I played him. La- I played him last night. Not, he not today. He's in one of my Sims teams, um, Sim Lab team, and he was popping in Sim Labs. I'm like, who is this guy? And I like went to. I got, I, I think I had two Washington stacks out of like the 60 teams I built. And I was like, I kind of want to just leave it. And I left it and it's 23 points. Um, yeah, Acuna. Listen, Acuna stealing three bases doesn't shock me. The Mets can't throw anybody out. I think they're 0 for 21 on stolen base attempts this year. So um, that's not shocking at all. Fun fact for, you know, Jose Quintana there. Um. Anyway. 
I lost my train of thought. Any interest in the Oakland Bats here? Definitely not the Oakland Bats, but definitely on the Texas Bats. Like Corey Seager, you know, that whole lefty crew. Um, Garcia is fine also, but no Oakland Bats at all for me. Yeah, and, you know, talking about prospects as far as, like, Texas is concerned, they called up um, one of their top prospects as well on Tuesday. He got the start. I think he went over. Um, he just <laughs> – Texas, man. They had – Texas had no outs with bases loaded in the third inning and didn't score a run, and I knew that was a bad sign right off the bat <laughs> um, to start that game. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah. but, yeah, they, Davis Wenzel um got the got the call up big big time hitter in in Triple A so far power wise he's minimum salary on DK as well so oh and he's third base right yep so a lot of um so we, lot of we got two place. we got two two min price guys that we can apply wow yeah that's when you were like talking about you were talking about like um Strowman being expensive I'm like oh, right yeah he's right right. <laughs> Right. Doesn't doesn't matter. Um, so right. yeah. I'm checking to see if FanDuel FanDuel added him. He's minimum salary on FanDuel as well. Um he wasn't on the FanDuel slate Tuesday, but minimum salary over there. Uh the only thing, like maybe he doesn't start against the righty, but I don't think they called him up not to let him play. Um, so I I assume that he's gonna get a, a majority of the starts at third base until um Jung comes back here because they they had called up um, gosh, Justin Justin um, Fisco Fisco. Anyway, um, they had called him up, and then like he got hurt, so it didn't matter. Um, so and yeah, I think so I, I think uh, I think Evan Carter hit one out tonight too. About time, on yeah, on Tuesday yeah, about night. Time. Yeah. So good to good to see the Rangers. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very heavy on Texas again. Um, they're a team that I like a lot on this slate. So see, we'll see, man. It baseball, you just have to remember that you're a Hall of Famer if you go three for ten. Um, just remember that. All right. Let's play the morning grind game and then uh, we'll get out of here. Very interesting, smaller slate, but a lot of different ways to build today. Under eight K to get six or more strikeouts. Who do you got? Um, I'm gonna go Hunter Brown. All right. What if it? What if it is um not Brown? If it's not Brown, then I'll go Cutter Crawford. All right. I was just gonna say, might as well just go Spencer Argetti. But I, I yeah, well, you. I'd like to go him if he's not if he's gonna be you know the pitcher. I but... think it's Brown or him. Um, for what it's worth, All right, I think well, it's give, gonna be one me, of those Give me Brown, Brown or him then. All right, I'm gonna go Irvin against my Sox. They're striking out at a huge clip. Start to see. I can't wait to see his strikeout prop. There's no props up yet. Can't wait to see his prop. Um, and listen, old Stevie needs to get going on some props. Um, get my butt kicked on on props this week. So um, coming out hot tomorrow. I'm feeling it. I'm I'm bouncing back tomorrow in the prop world. So just be ready for it. Um. Over 8K to score under 15. A few options up here. Who's your bust today? I mean, I think Lugo. <laughs> A few options. Maybe just one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, I mean, I like all these guys. I think like if I had to pick one to like maybe struggle, Hunter Green, I guess, just because of the ballpark. Yeah, I mean ballpark considered. So uh over 4K to hit a home run. Who's going yard today? Uh I will go I'll go um Corey Seeger. <laughs> you get that right, you might be in business with the chalk shortstop being um minimum salary. So I'm going to go to my boy, Spencer Steer. I know I'm sure a lot of people um, didn't expect that one. Under 4K to get two hits. Who's a cheap bat that you like today? Um, cheap bat. Uh, 
I gotta find. Oh, I'll go. Um, I'll go Oliver Dunn. Yeah, don't hate that one. Um, I think that one's fine. I don't know how much we'll necessarily um, need him today, but yeah, I I thought I, I really thought you were gonna go Rizzo because you were talking about him earlier. Yeah, um, I really thought you were gonna go Rizzo. I'm going to go Cronenworth. I really wish he didn't have to play um, Cronenworth at first base, but I love this spot for him against Kyle Hendricks. So uh, give me Cronenworth to get two hits today. That's a good one, too. Stack to score six or more runs. There's plenty of options today. Who do you got? I'll go Atlanta. Atlanta. I like it. I'm going to go back to the Yankees, the Stinkies. Um, I'm going to play the Yankees today, so let's stack them up. Uh, no props up. Any other bets that you like here on this slate? Uh, I have not looked at any totals yet, so not not yet. No. I was looking at um. Oh, I was trying to pull it up because I didn't remember the odds, but yeah, I mean, I'm gonna pay a little bit of juice on this one, but give me the Yankees minus a half a run in the first five against the Marlins. You got to pay. You can get it right now at, on Fanduel at one thirty eight. So. I'm going to pay the juice on that one. I like the first five minus a half a run here for the Yankees. Stroman should pitch really solid, and Ryan Weathers kind of stinks. So give me give me the Yankees minus half a run, first five. Um, first five bets have been really solid to start the season for me, so maybe I should be doing more of these. Um, <laughs> what's, the, what's, the Ranger, what's the Rangers first five? Do you have that up? Um, yeah. Let's. I'm, I'm waiting for it to, to load. See that because they're only minus 188 for the game, which I think. Uh, is, Rangers uh, first five on BetMGM minus half a run is 130 minus 130. I don't mind that. Bradford and Stripling. Yeah, I mean, you assume <laughs> you assume the Rangers are going to do some work. I th- um, I figured they'd be b- minus 200 or better for the game, and they're only minus 188, 180. Yeah, uh, I mean, Justice says, I'm going to keep betting Christian Walker to home run. He owes this one. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> um, Cal Quantrill had six strikeouts against the Dime Bet. And what's funny is um, I probably won't play a ton of the early slate because I have a lot going on tomorrow morning. Just Christian Walker's going yard. Uh, Arizona is going to score 10 plus. Walker's going yard. Um, that's what's happening on the early slate tomorrow. You're welcome. Um,. Gosh, any any final thoughts before we get out of here, Tim? No, thanks as always, Stevie. Yeah, man, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate everyone hanging out with us um, over there on YouTube. We'll be back on Thursday. We got an early slate on Thursday. I think there's like five or six early games and then like one late game. So early baseball slate for Thursday. So we'll have an early breakdown. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Back tomorrow. Good luck, everyone. We'll see you then.